Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of The Land of Time Forgot and Pellucidar at the Earth's Core from American Mythology. So American Mythology is a smaller comic company, and they have the rights to do some of the lesser-known works of Edgar Rice Burroughs. And so Burroughs is very famous for doing Tarzan and doing uh, John Carter of Mars, but he also created some other things that have not gotten as many comics over the years. And so American Mythology has given them their own comics and has created this kind of shared universe between these different worlds that Edgar Rice Burroughs created. And so I've already reviewed uh, the Carson of Venus comics they've come up with in the last couple months. And I also reviewed the Fear on Four Worlds event. Those are the one shots you're seeing right there um, that they did in recent months. And so what I'm going to review today is the comics that led up to that. And it's only eight issues. It's a very small universe. And I don't feel like you need these comics to understand, you know, Fear on Four Worlds or anything like that. But it enhances the experience. And if you're a Burroughs fan, you might want to pick these up. So let's take a look at what began this whole line is The Land at Time Forgot. This was a three issue mini series and this is the painted variant cover. And they did painted variant covers for all three issues and they are very, very beautiful. If you are a dinosaur fan, if you are an Edgar Rice Burroughs fan, pick these up. These are fantastic. Um, and this is the painted variant of the last issue of this mini series. Happy looking Jasper, isn't he? <laughs> um, but the regular covers are really nice too. So yeah, this is great. I only have uh, the regular cover of the first issue. So anyway, it is a story about um, Abby and Ethan who hear family stories about this lost island that no one's ever found and decide to go um, looking for it. And that's Abby right there with the gun. And to their surprise, not only does it exist, but it is filled with dinosaurs and all kinds of primates and, and uh, Neanderthals and stuff like that. And so they discover that it's kind of in this place outside of time and space and they even and Abby even meets her ancestor, Tyler Bowen, who is still on the island. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Um, kind of like, um, kind of like Walking Dead is in a world uh, with zombies in it, but it's about the conflicts between the humans in that world. Same thing with this mini series. It's set in a world with dinosaurs in it, but the conflict is between, you know, our protagonist and uh, another group of humans which is basically world war one germans who are the bad guys in this story and they're also stranded on the island of course um beautiful covers aside when you look at the interior it's a little bit of a different experience so this is what the interior art looks like um it looks unfinished and just unattractive, unfortunately. Um, but what I will ask you to do is look beyond the artwork. And when is that worth doing? It's worth doing when the artwork tells a story, clearly. And I feel like this artwork does. I never got lost about what was going on. I could clearly tell, even if it looked unfinished, it still told a story. And when that story is worth telling, I think this story is worth telling. Uh, the guy who drew this cover is also the writer, Mike Wolfer, and he has a long history of loving the land that time forgot, and he just pour, pours a lot of passion into it. And it's not the greatest story ever told, but it's a good one. He, I think, feel like it shows his love for those old novels, and it, it's it's worth getting if, if you're a fan of Edgar Rice Burroughs or this sort of story in general. Uh, one thing I'd like to talk about is Sita the Savage. And this is a new character that they created for the comic, I think. I can't find any reference to her being in the novels. I haven't read the novels, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, but this is, a, as far as I can tell, a new character. 
Um, I actually like Sita. Um, she's a cool character. Um, I don't know if she's quite as cool as Mike Wolfer thinks she is, but uh, she's basically a native of the island, but she's an outcast and she's always like, you know, being a badass and, you know, going off and disappearing and doing, you know, God knows what, and just showing up at the last minute to save people, you know. <laughs> She's the sixth ranger of the island. <laughs> but um, the only thing I don't like about Sita is her co costume's a little stupid. Uh, basically, she just wears this fur over one breast, and she has her hair conveniently covering the other, which gets really awkward in some scenes where, you know, her hair would probably be, you know, flying or... Or, or blowing in the wind or whatever. Um, it just gets really weird sometimes, and I just wish they'd come up with a better costume for her. Uh, but other than that, it's a really enjoyable miniseries if you can look past the artwork. And just keep in mind that the other miniseries are going to be, have better artwork. And speaking of which, we have the next one, which is terror from the earth's core and this is a crossover with pellucidar which is another of edgar rice Burroughs creations and this basically um imagines the world is hollow and inside of it is this whole world with its own sun and dinosaurs in it but also creatures and um these covers are a little bit different so this is the regular cover and so they did a cover that would basically have um, a hero from one of those properties, like this is the hero from Pellucidar, and then the variant cover, which I don't have, would have the other hero. So it would be, you know, someone from the land that time forgot on the variant in this case. Um, I don't think these are quite as effective but they get the job done. And this one is actually pretty cool because you have this creature here. It's called a Wiru or something to that effect. I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but he looks really, really menacing on this cover. And so here's the cover for the second issue. And the cover for the third issue. And so, as I said, the artwork in these is nicer. So, it definitely gets the job done. It's not going to win any awards or anything, but it definitely gets the job done. It's a really cool story about uh, the Mahars, uh, the villains from Pellucidar, uh, leading an incursion into the land that time forgot. They just kind of bring a small, kind of a group or an, maybe a small army. I mean, we are talking about, you know, kind of a primitive island. So, uh, and they start conquering villages. Uh, and it's sizable enough to be menacing, but it is small enough to be credible that only a small group of heroes can defeat it. And so it's it's a really cool little mini series. It is a nice, you know, idea that kind of crossover between these two properties and it feels pretty natural and pretty cool. Um, so what comes next is one of two stories and you kind of get to choose how you want to read these. So this is a Pellucidar at the Earth's core one shot. And well, First of all, cover's nice. <laughs> but I will say that the artwork here is quite nice. And as you can see, this artwork is quite nice. This is definitely my favorite art so far in the Burroughs comics from American Mythology. It's just gorgeous. And the story's really cool. It's a, It takes place directly after uh, Terror from the Earth's Core and it leads into Fear on Four Worlds. And it's a very simple action tale, good guys chasing bad guys before they reach a certain place. And it's just, it's really cool. Uh, and I really highly recommend it. Um, and then the next comic I'm going to show you is a side story. This is the Land, Land at Time Forgot Annual. This is the only cover for it. It is beautifully painted. I love this cover. This is also reprinted in the Sita 
the Savage mini series. So that's two issues if you'd rather have that and the covers for that are quite nice as well. Um, this is a really cool mini series that goes into Cetus origin. Uh, it is a Cetus story, uh, just kind of a solo for her. And the artwork is just really gorgeous. I really love this. Um, and so I really highly recommend picking this up. It's a side story. Um, part of it is a story that takes place right before Terror from the Earth's core and kind of enriches your understanding of what was going on there. Uh, it, it's a really nice addition to that story. Uh, and at the same time, again, it tells Sita's origin, which is really nice. It really makes me appreciate the character more. It's drawn by Mike Wolfer, gorgeous artwork, highly recommended. Uh, again, you know, you can get it as the annual or as the two issue Sita miniseries. Um, and that's it for these comics. So, like I said, only eight or nine issues, but you'll get all the backstory leading up to Fear on Four Worlds. And it's a small universe, but I think it's worth getting. Now, these are not easy to find from comic book sellers because they're so under-ordered. Comic shops often don't carry them or uh, tried to carry them and just didn't get enough sales to really justify putting them on the shelf. So the best thing to do, either A, if you want to read them digitally, get them on Comixology. They're on Comixology, pretty easy. Or you can go to American Mythology site and order them like I did. <laughs> and so uh, they've got everything in stock and their shipping is fantastic. It's affordable and they package it in a way that it will not get damaged when it comes to you. That used to be a concern when I would order from a publisher, you know, back about, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they would just, you know, drop it in an envelope and it would just be the good grace of God that it would get you get to you intact, but nowadays they do use, you know, professional standards of packaging to make sure this stuff gets to you fine. Um, and so that's pretty much all the comics I got to show you. Um, again, I think the stuff is not perfect. I mean, sometimes the artwork is lacking, but I think what's really important to me about these comics is that they're keeping Edgar Rice Burroughs' own comic shelves. And that's something that really hasn't been done, for instance, by Dark Horse. Now, Dark Horse uh, hasn't put out a regular Tarzan series in 18 years. Um, they are putting out every once in a blue moon, there might be a special or there might be a team up miniseries or something with a character from another company. But as far as something like this, like they did in the 80s, I mean 90s, <laughs> um, that doesn't happen anymore and they are putting out like reprint trade paperbacks of like older stories and they're also putting out um, graphic novel adaptions of some of the novels but as far as just being able to go up to a comic rack or a comic shelf and pick up a Edgar Rice Burroughs Tarzan comic you can't do that um, so I feel like it's really cool the American mythology is taking these Burroughs properties that haven't even had their own comic. I mean, they've been in like short stories or uh, backup stories, you know, graphic novel adaptions, but they haven't had their own comic just devoted to them with their name on the cover and doing actual series and one shots and all that good stuff of these properties is really cool. And, you know, and it's refreshing because for a while, you know, Dynamite Comics was the only folks putting out Burroughs comics. And they started out doing them unofficial. I mean, these were uh, just unofficial works based on, uh, you know, stuff in the public domain because you can do that, you know. Uh, and it's been amazing that they put out multiple series based on the Mars novels from Burroughs, which is amazing. But um, it's nice to have other stuff on the shelf, too. And like I said, comic shops really aren't seeing people buy these enough to justify ordering them in a lot of cases. So 
I mean, if you're interested at all, I recommend, you know, ca calling up your re comic shop and putting these on your pull list. Um, Carson of Venus is coming out right now. Uh, Moon Maid is supposed to have a mini series at some point this year, and Pellucidar and T Land at Time Forgot should have something coming this year as well. Um, but these comics need your support. Um, if you're looking for more Burroughs stuff, uh, Dark Horse is doing trade paperback reprints of older stories uh, of various Burroughs properties, as well as uh, their original graphic novel adaptions of various Burroughs novels. Um, and then Edgar Rice Burroughs properties itself is doing uh, online strips based on pretty much all the Burroughs properties you can think of. And those are available online for subscription and they look gorgeous. <laughs> They've got some good talent doing those. So there is Burroughs stuff out there even if you go to a comic shop and you don't see it on the shelf. It's still alive, it's still out there, and it's still a viable, you know, viable properties even a hundred years later. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Just wanted to shine a light on, on this comic line and hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time, see ya.